everybody, it's me, Gregory Scott. I was watching the amazing series by Shane Dawson uh, yesterday, and uh, it, if you haven't seen it already, it's got like 10 million views on it, but Shane Dawson is a YouTube personality, and what you're seeing is his chart, as much info as I've got on it, and um, he did this kind of interview series with Jeffree Star, who's a controversial YouTube figure, and he uh, makes, he's like a makeup mogul. So they did this tour, and they talked about really personal things, and I was just mesmerized by it. I was fascinated. I was in enthralled by it, and I don't really know much about Shane Dawson. I've always been... <laughs> A uh, fan of Trisha Paytas for some reason. She's just um, spoken to me and I've always loved her. Um, and Shane always was kind of on the periphery. Like they did um, collabs together, like eating things a couple of years ago. I watched those. I loved those. So because Shane has been doing this amazing stuff, I just wanted to have a look at his chart really and see what's going on. So what I found online on Astro Theme is that he was born on the 19th of July 1988 so the 19th of July 1988 and that's in Long Beach in California they don't know the birth time so I'm gonna use sunrise um, or well, 6 a.m. in this case and I'm going to look at what the planets are saying but because I don't have the exact time this is where it's useful to rectify a chart so I could find out the time now by, it, like for instance, if Shane sent me 10 major life events that he had, like when he graduated college, when he first realized he had a um, eating disorder, or when he came out as bisexual, or when he had some success, when his book was published, or when um, things were really bad in childhood, um, something particularly life-changing, graduating high school, any of the things that really are, you know, the key life events of your life so far. So I need 10 plus of those, and then I can work out the time of birth, because the, without the time of birth, I can't really rely on the house system, so I don't know what area of Shane's life these energies are going to really hit the most. So I can still go on the planets and the energy that they've got, but the sun might be up here in the ninth if he was born at three in the afternoon or it may be down here so i don't know so i can just go on the planets and see what that does so his sun which is his identity is at 27 degrees which is nine and nine is spirituality and completion so nine is very much like pisces in the astrology it's self-sacrificing it's spiritual it wants to get along with everyone, it wants to make everyone happy, and it puts itself last. Now, Cancer is the is also a water sign, and you can see that the strongest element in this chart is water. So water rules everything from spirituality to creativity to being loyal with family and really caring about your family and the people you're with, nurturing others, taking care of other people. Often uh, people will take care of others through food, um, being a restaurant owner or something like that, or through things like being in the system, social workers and psychologists. Also, people who have a cancer can be very artistic and creative. So, you know, making videos and um, sharing your feelings in a public forum, that's kind of creative. But that's really what his identity is about, to be this nurturing, caring person. And I think that really comes across, that he really cares. Like, I even, I after the Jeffree Star thing, I watched the Tana Monjo, I can't, I don't know how to say her name. I watched the show he did with her, the series he did with her, and he just seems to genuinely care whether people are doing well or not. Now, his moon is at 28 degrees in Virgo, the moon is what gives you a sense of ease and comfort, and it's, oh, I can relax, you know? And that is at 28 degrees, which is 10, which becomes a 1 in Virgo. So he's an amazing listener, and he picks up on information 
that's really his gift. Um, but his ego tries to sabotage him here in the second house at seven degrees in Virgo. But again, we don't, we're not so sure about the house placement. But the ego says, listen, this information that you're kind of working with, these inspirations and these ideas you want to express creatively, it's not such a good idea because you might get yourself in hot water. So when he first started, he would have really been aware that he he would have been very self-conscious of what he was doing and that he would get himself in hot water. And I think um, he was clever in that sense. This Black Moon Lilith helped him look at creative stuff and not become overly controversial. Pluto at nine degrees in Scorpio, really, Pluto in Scorpio is happy because it rules it rules Scorpio. At nine degrees, again, it's to do with spirituality. And there has been real pain in terms of the soul. I mean, it's easy to do a chart for someone in hindsight once you know all about their lives. You know, you can make it fit. But the the, the Pluto in um, Scorpio here is really the, the self-loathing and the eating disorders and all of that stuff, which creates a grand trine with Mercury at 11 degrees in Cancer and that North Node at 16 degrees in Pisces. So the fact that he's had all these body issues and that he's hated himself, that is what allows him to communicate in a loving manner, to be of service to other people. 11 is being a humanitarian and that is going to fulfill his life purpose to connect with a higher power, which is then going to give him even more creativity. And he's evolving as he goes and he doesn't, I don't think he has, he's particularly spiritual, but he's listening to his gut and he's constantly evolving. So that's the type of spirituality by listening to yourself in your inner voice. You can see this stellium, whenever you've got three or more planets together, you can call them a stellium. That this, we've got Saturn and Uranus at 27 degrees in Sag. So 29, 27 and 27, so we've got 9, 9 and 9 again. 9 is spirituality and completion. So there's a lot going on with him in terms of there's a built-in spiritual connection. We've got that Mercury here. Chiron is the wounded healer. Spiritually, he feels that there's something missing. And he needs to take care of other people to fill that hole in the soul, to, feel, to fill that gap. But what opposes that is his need to explore and to be outrageous and to have thrills and to be different and to express himself differently. So finding new ways of, of caring for people, finding new ways of nurturing people. And he's certainly done that. I mean, having that kind of interview with Jeffree Star about the self-harm and things like that and uh, displaying that to millions of people. And then Jeffree Star being a really good role model in the sense of being someone who has $3,000 to his name and then becomes this, uh, you know, uh, millionaire. It's a really great success story that you can come from a place of darkness and pain and that you can really turn your life around. I found it super inspirational. So that's what he's doing. He's nurturing people through his communication on camera. Neptune in Capricorn is nice because Neptune is the water planet of dreams and intuition. It's very strong. Eight degrees is power. And Capricorn, he's able to take his ideas and turn them into some sort of tangible format, so video. And he's able to turn ideas into practice. That's what helps him. And that's what he's that's why he doesn't run out of material, because he's so inspired all the time. Mars is at two degrees in Aries, so being in a relationship, very important. That's something that he needs to feel comfortable. Jupiter is at 29 degrees. Whenever a planet is at 1 or 29 degrees, because each one of these houses is 30 degrees, it becomes heightened. It becomes squared. So he's got good luck squared, and it's in Taurus. And 29 degrees, 2 and 9 is 11. When he works to help other people, that's when he really hears ka-ching. Taurus's money and wealth and all of that. So again, like most of us, if we say, how do I serve? 
then you start to get guidance that really puts you in the position you're supposed to be in and then you do really well. Venus at 17 degrees is 8 in Gemini. Very powerful communicator. So charming, so endearing, so lovely. You just look at him, you want to give him a big hug. Just such a lovely person. So that's the way the planets are kind of dotted around. But look at this. We've got a big grand cross here, I think. Yeah. A grand cross connects Chiron with his Mars and his Saturn and Uranus and his moon. So a grand cross is a big red square that creates a lot of energy, but that con that creates constant friction and that's something that's unresolved. So it's, it, it, it demands constant attention. So is the, the hole in the soul, the emotional pain that he's feeling causes him to listen to everything and to try and find out about everything. Like the conspiracy theory stuff, if I get enough answers, if I learn enough, if I find out enough, then I won't have that hole in the soul anymore and I'll be okay. Also, if I find a partner who loves me, then I won't have that hole in the soul in the mo more and I'll be okay. And also, if I take care of other people by communicating, then I'll be okay. Then the hole in the soul will go. The truth is really, Shane, if you're watching this, the, ho the all of that stuff is is great that you're doing it and it helps a lot of people but the only thing that's going to fill the hole in the soul is a connection with a, a connection with a higher power of your understanding that loves you unconditionally so try different meditation techniques until you connect you find one that's effortless and easy and it allows you to connect with your higher power and that's what fills that hole in the soul because then you feel unconditional love and then that hole is filled. So this square is going to drive him to work and work and work and work and work and to get relationships going and to, to make sense of things and to study and to learn and to try and figure out the patterns and things because he wants to feel better, basically. So people who have grand crosses have lots of energy and can achieve a lot. And you obviously see that with this man. Um, but I'm also just noticing, no, that's not a kite. I thought it might be, but it's not. We've got a kind of triangle of harmony, as I call them here, which connects his, well, the, the sun in Cancer with Jupiter and the moon. Wow. The gold and silver of that. So we've got real wealth through helping people, real success. And obviously he's broken through beyond all of the barriers and without having the time of birth that's really as much as i can say on that uh having it um yeah shane if you want it done uh in more in depth and you have your time of birth then let me know and i will do it in depth i really i just i just thought i'd do it because i not to you know be to to get in contact with shane or anything i just wanted to look at this and see where this amazing talent is from and now looking at the chart it makes perfect sense because his mission is to really be of service and to nurture and take care of other people in a creative way so he's living his path already and most people achieve the life purpose you know in their 30s 40s 50s and sometimes even 60s so it's really interesting so i hope you enjoyed this maybe you got something from it as well if you would like a private reading with me so if you have your date of birth time of birth and place of birth uh, can draw up your chart if you do if you don't have the time of birth like this chart then i can rectify the chart for you please get in touch via the email readings at gregoryscott.co.uk or on the contact page on the website gregoryscott.com and just say i don't have the time of birth i'd like to have it rectified then once we do that I, we'll have the time, the date of birth and the place, and then I can really analyze this chart and see what you're all about. And then the tri-wheel, which is the natal chart, the progress chart, and the transits 
on the outer wheel. And this is what's happening in the sky at the moment and how he's going to be influenced over the next couple of months and years. His progress chart is how his personality is changing and is going to change over the next couple of months and years. And this is artificially constructed by me. So I take the birth chart, I speed it up for one degree for every year he's been alive, and it shows me how he's developed. And the natal chart is what I just looked at. So this allows me to see what's coming up for him. So, yeah, there we go. So I'm not going to get into that this time, but um, I hope it's been useful. Uh, please order your reading with me on the website, gregoryscott.com. Hit the subscribe button, and I'll speak to you soon.